What's up traders, Andrew O'Connell here with Pristine Capital. Welcome to your market recap video. It's August 1st of 2022. Well, let's dive into these indices. Today we have the S&P 500 finished down 0.3% on the very first day of August. The NASDAQ QQQ basically finished out flat down 0.06%. Same thing for the small caps, basically flat down a smidge. Same thing for the Dow Jones down just 0.19%. And then we had the ARK Innovation ETF, which was the outperformer for today, which finished up 1.24%. Pretty much all of these indices closed towards the middle of their day's range, but you can see that the small caps actually closed much closer to the highs than these other indices. We did have a sizable uptick in the volatility within the market. That is noteworthy, and that is certainly not something to ignore. And you can see the market breadth was very mixed. We had 50% small cap advancers and overall we had 45.2% of volume. My trend model did flip from a plus three to a plus one. So this is actually incorrect. I forgot to update this slide. We did have that shift today. So for me with my trading plan, I wanna act accordingly when my trend model does flip. And I wanna make sure that I'm taking some profits off the table, being a little bit more conservative and really just doing a lot of contingency planning on existing longs. And luckily, I had been taking some profits on long exposures on Thursday as well as Friday of last week, and I did continue to do a little bit of cleanup today. Finvis heat map. Take a look. There was a significant amount of weakness, some mixed action, whatever you want to call it. These semiconductors, they are showing some nice relative strength ever since the bill you know, for more stimulus was signed. So this is definitely a group to keep watching. And you can see consumer defensives were pretty strong as well. And that's a pretty risk off area of the market. We did have at varying points of the day, it was meta that was really carrying the rally. And that's what we talked about within the pristine capital trading group was like, hey, like we have meta that's carrying the weight. Meta is like such a relatively weak stock. So that's never really a good look for the market. And we did have a pretty sizable crude oil pullback. And a lot of these energy stocks did pull back. But what I noticed is the pullbacks were not like sloppy, high volume, extended range, red candles. A lot of them really did hold their technical patterns. That group still looks pretty good. Sectors, the solar energy sector is in our top momentum slot, and that did pull back today. And you can see consumer discretionary is slightly positive. Blockchain assets, which are in our third slot, they did pull back ever so slightly. Biggest pullbacks <clears throat> were in the cannabis space and the biotech space as well as in the energy space. And we did have a mixed bag. The best performer for today was the ARK Innovation ETF. And we're noticing that we're getting some economic data. It's not really coming out the best, right? It's coming out pretty weak. And I do believe that the market is really starting to price that in. The 10-year treasury yield went from like 3.5% all the way down to 2.5%. So that's, that's pretty big. That's a monumental move. And I think the mistake that a lot of traders could end up falling into is like July was a fantastic month. All of these asset markets had huge outsized returns. The seasonality for July is fantastic. But now we're coming off of a market that just had a really nice move. The seasonality gets a lot worse. And then we also have like, is the 10 year treasury yield going to make another like 1% move over the next month? Probably not. So really, I'm just interpreting the situation as, hey, the trend model's still positive, right? It's at a plus one. But I think a lot of that asymmetry that we've been talking about really for the past two months, if you've been following these videos, I do think a lot of that is gone. And so I wanted to make sure that I was acting accordingly. So I did, you know, again, I reduced some exposures today. High beta was up 0.19%. We had international value up 0.26%. The big news for today and something I was watching pretty closely was <clears throat> this uh, this controversy over U.S.-China relations and Nancy Pelosi heading over to Taiwan. That apparently is going to happen tomorrow night. So worth watching. Originally, it was like, is she going to go to Taiwan? Is she not? And the CCP pretty much explicitly said, if she goes over to Taiwan, we're going to respond with military force. So it gets us in this weird like game theoretical game of chicken where is she going to go? As of now, I believe she is scheduled to go. She's going to be apparently in like a military, uh, like a plane or vehicle, whatever you want to call it. 
and I think that's pretty much like standard procedure anyway, but yeah, she's going to be heading over and we'll have to see what the reaction is. We really don't know. So that's another negative catalyst that we have facing us. It's like all the asymmetries that we just talked about are no longer there. And then we also have this geopolitical thing hanging over us as well. So for me, when things get really dicey and it's like, oh man, I don't know what's going to happen next. That's typically when I like to take my foot off the pedal. And August, historically, is one of my most challenging trading months, personally. And typically what I do, because I've studied my stats and studied my trading, is the market moves very slow. And a lot of times I tend to trade a little bit more actively than I should. And I think a lot of traders go through this where the market's slow and it's like, oh man, what do I do? Like, the market's slow. Like, and your wheels start turning even faster, right? And it's like, you're trying to think of ways to make money and all that stuff, but in reality, like... You can have a month that's just a slow month. And there's nothing wrong with that. So that's my goal for August. Really just focus on minimizing any potential drawdown that I might have. And that is really the primary goal. S&P 500, we're pulling back to the five-day EMA. So nothing extreme at all. Uh, let's take a look at the NASDAQ real quick. NASDAQ also pulling back to the five-day EMA. But consider this, you know, God forbid these asset markets they retest the 20-day simple moving average look how far of a drop that is down that's huge and that would just be a routine test of the 20-day simple moving average that happens all the time so that's why again like asymmetry it's not really working for us anymore russell 2000 same thing retesting that five-day ema and the dow jones also in a similar boat on the verge of retesting the five-day ema in terms of trades that i did today let's pull these up I did again take off a few more positions and check this out. Oh yeah, I did actually take this trade in pre-market. This was pretty awesome. BLDR reported earnings this morning and they just had a ridiculous earnings beat. And I posted in our earnings channel, let's you can see the, the blue link here, but they beat their earnings estimate by an incredible amount. So I got long this asset in the pre-market at 7.13 a.m. I was on the desk, just bought it. Um, got long at 71, 71.40. Sold part of the position literally like eight minutes later for 74.50. There was a version point of control there. And then I sold, uh, or no, yeah, 822. Excuse me, I sold for 74.50. And then what else did I do? Sold the remainder of the position at 72.87. Really just a small base hit. Again, I was feeling kind of unsure about the market. I closed out my GLBE position. This was actually my largest common stock position. Closed it out pretty much right on the open for 22.51. I had paid $16.99 for that, so I had like a, about a 30% winner on the largest position that I had, which is good, but it doesn't really have a high relative strength score, so I wanted to just kick it out. You know, I figured this thing, it's kind of sitting in my portfolio. It's had a nice gain, but now it's not really doing anything anymore, so I wanted to kick it out the way I can make space for a new opportunity, and then I tried some DQ common shares. This is a Chinese solar stocks. This is incredibly risky. Uh, for $61.59, I have a pretty tight stop on this one. Um, and then what else did we do? I took profits on a th another third of my ARC. January 20th, 40 strike calls for $10.30. I had paid $6.85. I'm down to the remaining third of that position. And then I had some spy puts that I put on as a hedge. I closed a third of the position out for a profit. The remaining two thirds I closed out for $5.25. I paid $7.58. The reason being, is that this position could decay on me if I leave it on. It expires August 19th. The market moves sideways, I could be in trouble on that one. So I decided, hey, let's let's kick it out. Let's manage risk and let's focus on, you know, just planning for the downside, contingency planning, that sort of thing. So yeah, with that being said, we're in a really ambiguous spot. Tomorrow I'm going to be watching to see these headlines around the U.S. and China tensions, see what happens to Nancy Pelosi. A lot of these leading stocks are pretty extended. I'm still watching them very, very closely. I have a very tight watch list. And now that I have a bit more of a cash buffer, now I can really focus in on the next opportunities rather than just like letting what I have run. That said, that about does it for this market recap video. Hope you all enjoy the rest of your evening. As always, I'll see you all tomorrow. Have a great night, everyone.